world's leading Christian apologists. Uh, please welcome Mr. Hank Hanegraaff. Well, we're at the Museum of the Bible, so I think it only appropriate to remind you that what Watchman Nee endured is not unique. I think about St. Paul's farewell address to the Ephesian elders, where he said, and now compelled by the Spirit, I'm going to Jerusalem, not knowing what will happen to me there. I only know that in every city, the Holy Spirit warns me that prison and hardship are facing me. However, I consider my life worth nothing to me. If only I may finish the race and complete the task the Lord Jesus Christ has given to me, the task of testifying to the gospel of God's grace. Now I know that none of you among whom I've gone about preaching the gospel will ever see me again. Therefore, I declare to you today that I am innocent of the blood of all men, for I have not hesitated to proclaim to you the whole counsel of God. Watch over yourselves and all the flock of which the Holy Spirit has made you overseers. Be shepherds of the church of God, which he purchased with his own blood. For I know that after I leave, savage wolves will come in among you and will not spare the flock. Even from among your own numbers, men will arise, distort the truth in order to draw away disciples after themselves. So be on your guard. Remember, for three years, I never stopped warning each one of you night and day with tears. The Apostle Paul knew that hardship and martyrdom was facing him. In like fashion, Watchman Nee knew that he would face martyrdom and hardships. In 1972, in the midst of an onerous cultural revolution, after 20 years in prison, Watchman Nee died. And when his relatives came to gather his ashes, a prison guard gave them a tiny note etched with Chinese letters. And that note found under his pillow said, I shall die for believing in Christ. But, but Watchman Nee's ministry did not die with him. My good friend who died recently, Andrew Yu, used to consistently remind me that a branch grew over the prison wall a branch that inevitably circled the world, a branch that touched my own life, August 4, 2003, when I met the progeny of Watchman Nee. And I learned a great lesson. That lesson is that truth matters, but life matters more. Amen. Outside, the truth kept by the whole church, personal experience would be deprived of all certainty, of all objectivity. It would be a mingling of truth and falsehood, of reality and illusion. So truth really does matter, but life matters more. And the life that matters more is not a prohibition upon knowledge. It is, however, the transcending of knowledge. It is the transcending of all philosophical speculation. Christian theology is in the final realm a means. It is a unity of knowledge subserving an end that transcends 
all knowledge. And that ultimate end is union with God or deification. God became man, said St. Athanasius, so that man might become God. Or Luther put it this way, word became flesh so that flesh might become word. That truth has been recovered in the West, indeed around the world, by the progeny of Watchman Nee. And it is a truth that absolutely revolutionized my life. I'm experiencing today life that is life to the full. And this is something that we not only experience as individuals, but as my friend Chris Wilde has so eloquently stated, it is something we share with the world. And he doesn't talk that talk, he walks that walk. Therefore, since we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, let us throw off everything that hinders and the sin that so easily entangles and let us run with perseverance the race marked out for us. Amen. Looking unto Jesus Christ, the author and the perfecter of our faith, who for the joy set before him endured the cross, scorning its shame, and sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. May that be each one of our legacies as we are translated into eternity.